Howdy, Jacob here. Today we're looking at company number six on our dividend yield screener. And today's company is Amcor. So let's start looking at a little bit high level financials. Um, market cap 13.5, enterprise value 19.9, about 6.4 billion in net debt. Um, it's a containers and packaging company. Price to earnings 14.0. Price to book 3.4. Eh, let's see growth here. Probably not much as a containers and packaging company. It's $13 billion and it doesn't appear so. Let's look at margins. Pretty consistent. Operating margin also pretty consistent. And then they have this. Beautiful 50 cent dividend on a 5.39% yield for all the dividend investors out there. Let's look to see if they can afford this. So, free cash flow wise, 650, 530, 1 billion, 1 billion, 1 billion. They're paying out 720 million. I mean, it, they can afford it right now. It's a pretty big payout ratio, but, um, oh, and they're buying back shares. Interesting. Okay. So looks like they're using a lot of their free cash flow to pay the dividend and then pretty much anything extra they're using to buy back shares. They've been issuing a lot of debt though, outside of that to also pay for that. Let's see what their debt's looking like. $6.6 billion. Jumped huge between 2018 and 2019. I think that's when they started to buy back shares. Pretty close. Um, all right. So let's look at doing some present value for this company. So um, if we're looking at their dividend increases, it's been very, very marginal. I was conservative and said, you know, let's just assume they keep it flat. Um, revenue growth, I mean, there's no growth here. Uh, conservatively, I feel like my most appropriate assumptions would just be 0 and 10. Oh, whoa, that is not 10. All right, income margins. I mean, I do like that their income margins and free cash flow margins have been relatively consistent and consistent with each other. Maybe free cash flow a tiny bit higher. Let's see, 6, 6.5. Let's do that. 6, 6.5. And then let's say they buy back 2% of shares. 2019, I'm assuming, is an acquisition. Or 2018, let's see. Okay, between 2019 and 2021, jumped a lot. 2019, 2021. It's not really any acquisitions. I'm wondering why they... Yeah, share based compensation, huh? Well, if it gets close to price, uh, the price we want, we'll look more into that because that's interesting. They've been slowly buying back shares and then boom, jumped up a bunch. So I, I would have assumed acquisition, but I'm not seeing anything. Looks like they sold off parts of their business, which shouldn't really require extra shares to do so. But again, if we get, if we get to that point, um, that it's close to a price point, we'll be digging into the 10Q and 10K to look into that. All right, so initially I'm getting a $4.73 price to get a 15% return, which means it would have to drop 49% from its current price with these assumptions, of course. Again, I hope everyone does does their own analyses to come up with their own conclusions, but I hope everyone has a good rest of their day. Thank you.